coming to you from the Bears Den in Phoenix, Arizona for National Junior College Men's Basketball. It's championship day of Region 1 play as the defending national champions, the Phoenix College Bears, 26 and 5 by way of record. And they're going to be taking on a team that they faced in last year's Region 1 championship, the Tohono Jagos. They come in with a record of 14 and 17. Mike Caratanudo joins me. I'm Jeff Lowry with MCTV Sports. And Mike, uh, I think this is going to be an awfully good game considering the fact that Phoenix College lost to this Tohono team on two occasions during the regular season. Absolutely, Jeff. Phoenix College went through their schedule, Division II team, not losing to any Division I teams, but losing three games to other Division II teams. Very, very, very heated rivalry, obviously, these last few years. Like you said, last year, the championship came here. Tano fell short. Well, they want revenge. They got revenge in the regular season, but you and I both know how tough it is to beat a team three times in one season. And Phoenix is led by truly one of the most dynamic players in recent history in the ACCAC, Brandon Brown. Yeah, Brandon Brown, phenomenal semifinal game the other night here, Jeff. 37 points. He had 23 in the first half, but he was dishing the ball. He was getting his teammates involved. The ACCAC Player of the Year, we should say, Brandon Brown. He already got that award. Probably one of the most phenomenal point guards to come through this conference. I know everybody suffers from the uh, what they've seen lately, but you and I have been around this for a while, Jeff, and he probably is one of the, the top three point guards to come through this conference. But he's backed up. I mean, Troy Conley in there in Troy Conley, third in the conference in three-point shooting, over 46% for Troy Conley, but they can also work it down low. Travis Meeker's been a phenomenal addition for them. And off the bench, the soccer player, you know how to get him in there, Jeff. Anthony Tokpa, the other night in the semifinal game, he threw down one of the most thunderous dunks I've seen, and he had a rejection that sent the ball into about the fourth row of the bleachers. So this is a team that's deep, but again, like you said, they've had their struggles with Tejano in the regular season. Season. And talking about the Jagos, uh, this is a team that's been in existence for only four seasons. Uh, they've been in this Region 1 championship game now twice in the last two years. Uh, what do we expect from a team that is uh, notoriously a very good rebounding team, but they were last in field goal percentage this year? Yeah, that's one thing that has hurt them, Jeff. And watching them play, I saw them play a few weeks ago against Mesa. They got a last second victory off an inbounds play, but they trailed the whole time. And you're right, they struggled shooting. If they struggle shooting tonight early on against Phoenix, it could be detrimental. But when you talk about Tejano, Jeff, Najee Matlock and Kyler Ashley in the first game, Matlock had 17 points. Ashley had 16 points. And in the second game, they each had 17 points. We said both wins for Tejano. So that's just one thing that you look at. They're going to have to carry their team. Again, they out-rebounded Phoenix by six in the first game. In the second game, it was only by one. But still, both teams, you know the coach Coaches have them disciplined to crash the boards. And for Tejano, like I said, there's nothing sweeter than revenge. You got it twice in the regular season. Like I said earlier, the third time, though, going to be tough, and especially with the Phoenix College team that just rolled over Scottsdale. And Matt Gordon, I know you and I kid around off camera, but you could call the Div Region 1, Division 2 tournament the Phoenix College Invitational. Coach Matt Gordon, not happy when I said that to him. He wants to keep his team focused. But, Jeff, he's been here 11 years and 11 straight Division 2 championship games for him. Absolutely and they're looking for their seventh Region 1 championship. So it's Phoenix College the defending national champions. They're ranked sixth in the country, taking on Tohono. We'll be back with all the exciting play-by-play -play action in just a moment. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure is too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just... Please, don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. All right, welcome back to the Bears' Den. Phoenix College, we're getting set for this Region 1 championship game between the defending national champion, Phoenix College Bears. We come in here with a record of 26 and five. Conference record, Michael, very impressive. 19 and three, and taking on the Jagos of Tohono. They come in with a record of 14 and 17 and 10 and 12 in conference play. Yeah, I mean, you look at Phoenix College and this uh, recent rival, like you said, I mean, Tejano only being in the conference her fourth year now, but 
the second year they've met in the championship game. We were talking about earlier, Tejano three and two against PC in the last five games. Mm -hmm. Although, like you said, PC kind of got them last year in the championship game, 87-69. They ran away with it. I mean, you made a good point in pregame, Jeff, how Tejano hasn't shot all season long the greatest from the field, but this part of the season they've been better. Well, they're going to need it because obviously we talked about Brandon Brown, but you and I both know you pretty you, you you very quickly run out of adjectives to describe what Brandon Brown means to this team. And you know, yeah, he can score points. He had 37 points, but this is a, a kid that's dishing the ball. Everybody's involved. Great motion on the Phoenix offense. And uh, Tahana, like I said, would love to go to uh, four and two against them and uh, head to the national tournament. Phoenix College is being introduced right now. And Brandon Brown, let's see, he'll be the first one introduced. Uh, very big game. Listen to this crowd. He talked about the semifinals against Scottsdale. Not only did he have a playoff high of 37 points in that game, but he also set the career points record here at Phoenix College and surpassing a guy that went on to the NBA, old Mo Layton, Dennis Mo Layton, back in the late 60s. Yep. And so. A uh, very special night, but you got to put all that behind you and take care of business against a team, as you said, has won both encounters this year. Yeah, and I mean, for Phoenix College, like we talked about, I mean, I, I know it, it, it's very, <laughs> it's repetitive. You and I have touched on it, but a Division II team has never won the conference outright. Phoenix College did that this yeah. year. In doing that, they also didn't drop one game to a Division I team. They swept all of Division I. And like you said, the two losses to, to Hano and then um, another early regular season loss um, to a Division II team. And it, it's dominant, but when, like I said, when you look at Tejano, they're putting themselves in the perfect position to I take Division II by storm. I mean, even in their first year, they're about a 500 team. Yeah. Four years ago, you and I said, like, wow, you know, they're, they're kind of they're kind of hanging around, so they're good to go, but they, like I said, they've had a good season, and he like said Najee, Najee Matlock, and Kyler Ashley, two very important pieces to this puzzle. And it doesn't hurt to have the uh, the big man there in the middle, at number 30, Lamar Walker. So Lamar Walker, Dion Hooks will be jumping center here, and it's going to belong to the Jagos, and this game is underway, attacking the offensive half quickly. And they're led by Najee Matlock. Here's the move. And we're going to get a traveling call against the 6'11 center out of Detroit, Michigan. So we're just underway, no score. And our first look at the point guard, Brandon Brown, 5'10, 165 pounds out of Cesar Chavez. Let's look at the starting lineup for Phoenix. Brandon Brown, Noah King, 6'5, one of the guards. Troy Conley, the sharp shooting three point specialist. Number 30, Travis Meeker, 32, and Deion Hooks, the center. Phoenix College working it around. Meeker for three, and he hit it. Three to nothing. So Phoenix getting out, and I think getting out to a quick start is going to be very important for Phoenix. Well, Jeff, and the, and the deja vu thing for Phoenix College is they started out the game against Scottsdale with the three-pointer. It was from Troy Conley, but uh, starting both games, our, uh, our silly stat of the night, but so are the three-pointer. And they are not, as you know, scared to put that three up. Not just try, I mentioned it in the pregame. Troy Conley, eight for 17 in the second game against Tejano. And all his field goal attempts were from behind that three-point line, 24 points. So you and I know if he gets going, it can be uh, it can be trouble for Tejano. David Everidge, one of their top scorers, draws a foul in the low block. He'll head to the charity stripe. and. Just to add on to that comment, Mike, is the fact that Phoenix relies, you know, somewhat heavily on the three-point ball. They are the number one three-point shooting team in terms of percentage in the ACC AC. On the other side, the Jagos are number 11. 11 out of 12 teams, they are 11th in three-point shooting. Everidge, who averages 13 points a game, five rebounds, shooting 63% from the line. He hit the first of the two. He gets the second one to go, and it's three to two. 19-10 on the clock here from Phoenix College, a Region 1 championship game on NCTV Sports. 
Brandon Brown with the basketball, working over to King. King gets a support pass back and over to Brown. Brown on the angle, he'll stop. He will shoot and score. Well, I mean, there he goes again. I mean, Brandon Brown, you know, you could say he's an undersized guard. He's got a lot of interest, but Jeff, you always hear coaches say, you know, you can't coach length, you can't coach height, but you can't really coach speed. And Brandon Brown I mean, can stop on a dime reverse so well, we saw it there. Like I said, there is, is nothing this point guard can't do. And I mean, I, I said top three in pregame. I think by the, if he finishes up, say they were to win, not just because even if they get win this game, get back to the national tournament, if they won back to back, he'd probably be the best point guard to ever come through this conference to this point. Yeah, quite possibly. He's launching another three, and he nailed it with ease. He's got five. And Phoenix College is up eight to two. Full court pressure on the ball. And we're going to get a reach in foul. Nope, we're going to get a timeout. Diego's call a timeout with 18.20 left to play here in the first half. We play two 20-minute halves. And the one thing, because of the, the low shooting percentage of Tohono, uh, they are dead last in the league. You can't get behind, especially on the road, and especially against the quality team of the Phoenix College Bears. Yeah, and Brandon Brown, we said, not the highest shooting uh, three-point shooter for his team. That would go to, like we said, Troy Conley, 46.3%. And, and you look, I mean, but you look at Brandon Brown. I mean, he's he's seventh in the country, Jeff. Average 24.1 per game, but he's second in the conference with that. Eighth in the NJCAA with 6.3 assists per game. Uh, assists per game. Pardon me. And I mean, it's just one of those things. And you look at Russ Davis also for Phoenix College. He's right behind Troy Conley. He's fourth shooting almost 43% yep. from behind the arc. So they depend on it. But they Jeff, do. I mean, basketball-wise, they're great at it. A shot and a rebound by the Jagos. They get two opportunities. We're going to get a foul on the floor. What an effort by David Everidge, the 6'6", 225 pounder out of Las Vegas. Non-shooting foul, still 8-2 to two with 18.04 on the clock. Yeah, and Everidge is actually uh, 18th in the conference. The team's second leading scorer is about 14 points a game, Jeff. Yep. So he's, like I said, he's going to have to have a big down low, and you can't miss easy layups against a team like Phoenix College like that. When you have the opportunity, you got to put it away. A six-point lead for Phoenix. The Hono and the all-yellow uniforms. If it wasn't for the purple trim, it almost <laughs> looks like the road uniforms for Phoenix uh, last yeah, year. Just about to say that. Everidge on the baseline drive, tried to go up with the running right hand. The rebound is Everidge. He's all over the place. A sensational play. He's already got four rebounds. And it's eight to four. Well, the good news is he got three chances there, Jeff. But the bad news is for him, he needed that, especially from point blank range. And now Brandon Brown pointing to Meeker, saying you got to step up a little bit. But missing those from point blank range, again, it gets to you a little bit psychologically. But at the same time, like you're not always going to be getting three rebounds. So, Well, the Jagos come in here, the second leading rebounding team in the ACCAC. You can see why, as that ball is launched from the side and Ashley hits it. That was a three-point play, and it's eight to six. Yep, they're going to rule it a two. That was a two. Down on the other end, Phoenix comes right back. Meeker scores. He's got five, and it's 11 to six in favor of Matt Gordon's Phoenix College Bears. Matt Gordon, the head coach, and Coach Vargas on the other side for Tohono. Shot up, no good. Rebound, Phoenix College trying to go up with their largest lead of the game. Brown over in the corner. Conley's first effort from three-point range, no good. And a big sky rebound by Lamar Walker, the 6'11 competitor out of Detroit. Down on the other end, pull-up jumper by Matlock is good. They're staying close. 11-8. Hey, Sorry, Jeff. The one thing that we'll see too is the pace of this game. Both teams have no problem running up and down the court. You might think a three like there by Meeker looks rushed, but this tempo to the game is going to stay very up, very up pace because that's what both teams want. Gives it off the glass on the shot. There's Everidge again. He he forced up a bad shot there in traffic, even though he's got five boards already, and we're not even at the four-minute mark going in. Or four minutes into this game yet, and uh, got a foul going against the uh, Jagos. I was getting ready to say, I mean, just from the first three and a half minutes of the game, you can see why the Jagos are such a good rebounding yeah. team because of Lamar Walker and just the tenaciousness of Everidge. Almost stolen in the backcourt, 
And Brown's going to draw the foul. That's going to go against the Jagos, Devin White, the 6'3 sophomore out of Tempe. And White was just trying to pressure right there, Jeff, but I mean, he had his elbows up, and as he came down, he came in to Brown, and obviously you got to be a little uh, a little frustrated there for Coach Vargas because you're picking up a, a foul about 65 feet away from the basket. Oh. Tripped on his initial descent into the lane. And this is going to go against Kyler Ashley. That is his first foul, team's third. Both teams with three fouls here, 16-11, left to play here in the opening half. We play two 20-minute halves. Checking back in is Corey Quigley for the Jagos. Quigley out of Sanders, Arizona. That was a really quick break for Quigley. He checked out maybe, maybe about 20 seconds, went off the clock, and he's back in the game. Phoenix College trying to inbound it. They do successfully. Noah King back out to Brown. He averaged 24.1 points a game. That was second in the league. Here's the drive. Here's the pull up from the free throw lane and left it a little off to the left. And a big sky rebound by Devin White. Now the Jagos with a chance to tie this game as they trail by three. 11-8 Phoenix College. This is Matlock, their leading scorer this year. Average forcing the issue and that puts well it put Phoenix uh, for a moment in transition but the immediate foul and that's probably a good foul. Well it's good except uh, now you're putting them closer to the uh, to the bonus <laughs> very early in the yeah. first half. I know it's only four fouls and Tano needs to get to seven but that's two fouls though in the backcourt Jeff that you can't really be big fans of especially when we talked about the pace both teams transition defense is very solid that's one thing all season long that they've done well. Brown moving right working over to Conley pulling the trigger long three it's off the front iron no good. And man, Rebound oh. comes down to average here comes the Jagos they want to run here's Kaba in the lane all the way left hand got it. And it's a one-point lead for the home team defending national champions, the sixth-ranked team in the country, Phoenix College. Comes out in that gray uniform with the blue and caution yellow striping. Noah King, Conley, Conley 0 for 2 from three-point line. And what a pass that time. Dion hooks to Noah King who flashed the lane and drew the foul. Everidge is going to be called for the foul, or check that. That'll be Quigley's foul. Quigley's first. That's the team's fifth. And as you said, uh, getting close to that magic seven, which puts Phoenix College in the one and one. And that might happen here shortly, the way this game's going. So no, oh, absolutely, Jeff. And as he sinks that first, I was going to say real quick about Conley. He just checked out. but. And his, his three, a lot of times when you see him play, it looks like he's just rushing it. But that's how quick he gets it out. I mean, pretty accurate. And a soft touch, too, because losing most misses from the three-point line, you're getting long rebounds. You and I both know. But, man, such a quick release and such soft touch as uh, both free throws are good there. But, I mean, you look at that, and and what a weapon to have. I know he hasn't got hot. We did the game against Scottsdale earlier in the regular season. There was a point in that second half where he hit two right away and then later on hit two more. and. That's all it takes for him to get in rhythm, but just uh, probably one of the quickest releases I've ever seen live. Yep. Talking about number 30 for the Phoenix College Bears. Pass inside. Good move underneath, but quickly couldn't get it to go. Phoenix College with the rebound. Kevin Davis is now into the lineup for Phoenix College, number 14. He's out on the perimeter. As Brown dishes it off to him, and now gets a support pass back. 14-15 on the clock. We're in the first half. The Bears, the home team, leads it by three at 13-10. Meeker, who has five points. Brandon Brown looking for three, and he drains it with ease. His second three-point play, and the largest lead of the day, matching the largest lead of the day at six at 16-10. And Jeff, I mean, their zone was rotating good, but you cannot give him that much space. He was about a, maybe a foot behind the three-point line, and if he's going to get to get in rhythm like that, it is going to be an extremely long half and night for Tejano. Kaba forcing it up. I didn't see a foul there as Dion Hooks was just holding his ground. But they're not. They're going to say it was actually right. with the body, so that'll send to the line for the Jagos of Tejano Bengali Kaba out of Houston, Texas. 
Well, yeah, and Cobb did the right thing there, Jeff. And he's going to the lane, and I like that about Tohono. They've done the Jagos have done that all season long, taking it down low, being physical. They got maybe a teeny bit of a height advantage, especially when Walker's in there. Yeah. Um, and he's coming back down in. low, yeah, as he checks back in. And it's one of those things where, you know, you got to work to your strength. And Tohono down low definitely can, uh, can be a nuisance for Phoenix College. 16-11 is our score. 13 minutes and 42 seconds on the clock. First half action. That one rims around and goes. So Kaba hits both of his free throws. He's got four points, and his team trails by four. 13-30 on the clock. Brown going to work. Guarded there by Matlock. Good matchup there. Gets a support pass back, and now bounces outside and launches another three. Won't get this one. Topak, who was in there, tried to wrestle for it, and now full court pass down from the big man, and what a play by the Jagos as Matlock on a long assist play from the big man, DJ Spillers, and it's a two-point game. And this Tejano crowd, you talk about the crowd, gym being packed. Well, they drove a long way up here, Jeff, but they packed this gym again, just like they did last year. This is a rematch of last year's Region 1 championship game, as Mike just said. Brandon Brown trying to create outside. Here's Davis off the front iron, gets the rebound, puts it up. There was contact and the rebound, Kaba. And the Jagos with a chance to tie this, maybe take the lead. Good ball rotation, good patience on the break and transition, and Jesse Brown finds the promised land. And it's a tie game at 16 with 12, 28 left to go here in the first half. Well, Jeff, Jesse Brown was a hero in that Mesa game I talked about in the pregame show. The Thunderbirds were up the whole time, and Brown with less than five seconds left on an inbounds play gets the bounce pass and puts the layup in to give the Jagos the last second victory. Brown with the basketball, he's got eight for Phoenix. NBA three, and that's off, he's missed two in a row. And another rebound for the Jagos. They're second in the ACC, AC this year in rebounding. Shot top of the key, rimmed out, no good. Power rebound by Walker underneath, and he's gonna be hacked and fouled. And I think we might get a timeout here. Looks like Matt Gordon in his 11th year Virtually a, 20, a, a lock for 20 wins every year with Matt Gordon. They are in their 11th consecutive Region 1 finals. They've won yeah. six. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's coached here for 11 years, and he's been in 11 state leagues straight, Region 1, Division 2 championship games. And, I mean, I, like I said, he's, he's coaches always talk about opportunities. He's happy what he's built here. It is turnover, but when you win that much, Jeff, you and I both know, you know, getting a lot of local kids, you're, you're going to get the uh, the best that's around due to the fact winning breeds uh, winning breeds uh, success, but it also brings in a lot of recruits that uh, that see what's going on here and want to be a part of it. They've done an outstanding job over here, Samantha Azell, the athletic director, the Jagos, uh, the team in the yellow. Uh, almost like a caution yellow, I guess. Yeah, gold. Go gold. Gold. And uh, this is a team that's been in this conference for only four years. They've only been in existence for four years, and they've made a mark. They have, and again, it's... And now both teams with five, we were talking about Tejano committing fouls in the... Well, in, in fairness, I mean, Tohano, Phoenix College has committed them down low. Tejano's doing it 50 feet away from the basket, which I know as a coach, if, uh, if coach had any hair, he'd probably pull it out. They get a foul on the play here. Jesse Brown went in strong, and he was throwing that elbow. Looked like uh, he could have been easily called for the offensive foul in that situation and the foul goes against Phoenix and that is their sixth team. We're going to be shooting some free throws here in the first half. Phoenix with six team fouls and Tohono with five. So Jesse Brown missing the first one. 6'6 six, six competitor out of Madison, South Dakota. 16-16 tie with 11.48 left to play here in the first half. Second, and he knocks that one down. Well, Coach Gordon not happy with that call. You said we both noticed the elbow, Jeff. You called it, but not happy with that call. 
And look at this, the, the guests with a one point lead now. That is the first time they have led in this game. That came at the 1140 mark here in the first period. Conley, 0 for 2 from three point range. Brown. Couldn't get it to go. He's missed three in a row now. And Phoenix could use a little contribution from Connolly. And look at the big time blocked by Lamar Walker on the driving left hand by Kevin Davis. Jago's looking to add on to a one point lead, traveling along the baseline as they get it down to Jesse Brown. 11 minutes on the clock here in the first half in a 17-16 ball game. Look at this, Jeff, wholesale substitutions. Yep. <laughs> Devin White checks in, Matlock is in, Emmett Sloan, a 6'3 competitor out of Silver Spring, Maryland. Everidge and Walker, that's the five for the Jagos. Brandon Brown with eight points, he leads all scorers in the game. Averages 24.1 points a game coming in. All-time leading scorer in Phoenix College men's basketball history. King, Davis, Conley for three on the high arcing shot, and he's over three. Topak had the rebound, and we're going to get, I think, a jump ball here. And the alternate possession, it's going back to the Phoenix College Bears, who trail by one here at home with 10.30. On the clock, first half action. The Bears with 16 fouls to Hono with five. Conley to inbound. Here's Brown stuck in the corner, needs a timeout. Instead, he will and throw it off. The Jay goes off. in the corner. It's a heads up play by yep. Brown. But Jeff, I mean, you always hear Coach talking about inbounds play. Brandon Brown, yeah, one of your uh, better point guards. But at the same time, you got to get him a uh, better inbounds pass than that because you just walked him into the double team there. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. So Brown has to retrieve this one back in the Phoenix College backcourt. Moving right, picked up there defensively by Matlock. I've noticed that they're switching up on Brown defensively are the Jagos. He drives, goes in, dishes it up, and Topak goes in for the big time jam. His first field goal of the day, and the assist belongs to Brandon Brown, and they regain the lead 18-17 at the 10 minute mark. Well, that's what you want from your point guard. I mean, it, it, that was good. That was solid defense by Matlock. Jeff, we saw it right there, but Brandon Brown just so fast with the ball, cutting back and forth, trying to draw the charge there, and look at that. That's a good call. As Matlock, yeah, I was just about to say to you, Jeff, look at this, we're actually in agreement. Yeah. That's got to be a first. But no, Matlock, right, you saw him put his shoulder down. I know the Jagos fans might feel that Brown may have uh, flopped a little bit, but he led with his shoulder. But again, you look at Brandon Brown on offense, just the way he cuts. Matlock's been in front of him. He stayed with him, Jeff, but he just cuts. He crosses over so well, and that left that left Topa open for the dunk. And Brown all the way in with the left hand. Again, look at that crossover. It goes right to, right down the, right to the hoop. 20 to 17 in favor of Phoenix College. Jumper, no. Rebound, Davis. Brown quickly up out of backcourt. Getting picked up there by Matlock. So it's Brown, Noah King, Davis, Conley, and Topak out there for Phoenix. Brown, baseline, and a running, floating shot. He's got 12. And it's back up to a five-point lead, and great Phoenix College defense on the other end. Emmett Sloan lost it as he went up strong, and that was sensational hustle and a great play by Phoenix College's Kevin Davis. Jeff Brandon Brown was the other night against Scottsdale too. He hit, uh, he went on a stretch where he hit six shots in a row, and he's hit uh, three of their last four hoops. I mean, he probably would have had four if he didn't dish off for the dunk for Tokpa. He pulls up for a jumper here, and it rims out. Topak in there battling, but the Jagos come up with a rebound. Quickly up out of backcourt is Ashley. Ashley over to the near side. Kaba, and Kaba had it blocked. And now words and players getting out of control here. I didn't really think that that was really that flagrant of a foul. Well, there are some words exchanged, and Topaz still making the mistake, staring back at him as Coach Gordon 
He's going over there. He's telling the ref he's all right. And right now, Matt Vargas, the head coach of the Jagos, is over there. They're just trying to separate these two teams and calm things down with 8.33 left to play here in the first half. Coach Vargas not too happy. Coach Vargas not happy. You know, Coach Gordon not happy. And Anthony Toka, obviously a very passionate guy, except playing soccer here for Phoenix College. He went straight up and he probably didn't like the words, but either way, I mean, in a championship game, you probably want to be a, as much emotions as they have going. I know it's kind of, it sounds very contradictory, but you kind of want to channel them and not get out of control like that. So as the officials meet, we'll see what the call is. You know, I, I hate it when, a, when announcers say that because I think of all the times, you know, you're, you're, you, you and I have been in it, not maybe at the high level right. that some of these players are recovering, but. I agree, but you always hear the best you know coaches I mean? say, like, it's, it's a tough line to tow, but the best coaches always say that they know their players in the heat of the moment are going to walk away. They're not going to make that mistake. And yep. is it tough to do? Yes. I, yep. I'm saying this, and I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, because you hear people say, they're like, oh, yeah, right, you do it. But the best coaches say, I mean, those are the players they want. You're walking that very, very, I mean, it is an extremely thin it line, a, a millimeter line. line, but. So Tokpa is going to be called for his first. Wow, just a warning assessed to both teams. But, you know, hey, that's that's a good good call. Both of them like I said not making the smartest decisions there, but well, if you just joined us, you're watching the 2015 Region One Championship of the two teams from the Arizona Community College Athletic Conference. At the line is Bengali Kaba, and he missed the front end of two shots here. 8.33 on the clock, the visiting Jagos trailing the national, defending national champion Phoenix College Bears who come in here ranked sixth in the country by five. Second free throw is good. Five points for Kaba. Steal, Jagos scored again. Outstanding heads up play by Quigley underneath. His first basket of the game, and all of a sudden, it's a 22-20 ball game. 8-20 on the clock. Brown wants to settle things down. Few, heart, few hearts were racing during that little skirmish a moment ago. Brown now being guarded by Quigley. Over on the wing, Davis. Quarter pocket, Meeker, who hit his first two shots of the game, and is Missed the last two. Yeah, they rolled the dice there and Meeker missed, Jeff, but he's not going to miss too many of those. You do not want to leave him that open on the far side of the court at the three point line. He had a good game against Scottsdale the other night and all season long he's kind of played that other side of the court and done well. And oh, Meeker with a big foul there. And he got away with a travel. He draws the foul. And heading to the line is David Everidge. Average shooting just 63% from the charity stripe this year. The Jagos were eighth in the conference in free throw shooting, while Phoenix was fifth. Hey, you know, and you talked about getting away with the travel there, Jeff, and referees usually after a play like that, I mean, at any level, want to, want you know, get more control of the game. So now you even have to play a teeny bit smarter knowing the littlest of contact, especially in the lane, is probably going to be called. Now at the 740 mark, the two successful free throws by average has tied it up at 22 apiece. He's got six points. Brandon Brown with 12. Brown to the hoop, goes up with the left hand and he got it, he kissed it off the glass. 14 points for Brandon Brown. And right now, the stop in play, there is a fan over there shooting with a digital camera, and it, he has the light. The light that's on the camera was on, and it was uh, somewhat of a distraction. And so he has turned that light off. That flash doesn't help you uh, in these situations. No. Down low. Nice looking move, Walker almost finished it for the Jagos. He went up a little weak. And the rebound belongs to Phoenix and King. 
King has it over to Brandon. He'll launch a three and hit the three. Boy, what a first half for Brandon Brown, living up to his pregame hype. He has 17 points, and the lead is now five. We'll take a break, 27-22. From two-a-days to game day, Inside Maricopa Sports is your ticket to Maricopa Athletics. Get a sideline view of the game and see behind the scenes of the Maricopa teams. Learn more about the coaches and see how players achieve on the field and in the classroom. Catch the action all season long with Inside Maricopa Sports, only on MCTV Cox Cable Channel 115. For times, visit our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. All right, we're back here at the Bears Den. We're in Phoenix, Arizona for the Region 1 Division 2 State, uh, it's not State Championship, <laughs> but it's the Region Championship. Uh, we had a long week of high school basketball championships. Uh, a lot of great basketball. What about the Absolutely. Corona Del Sol Aztecs? Cassius Pete headed to UCLA to play football, but varsity all four years, all four years a state champion. and. Yeah. Uh, it was a team effort, and I mean, that Division II game between Gilbert Christian and Arcadia went to overtime. Connor Nichols and actually uh, Avante Nelms from Arcadia in the crowd here yep. tonight, so. I was impressed with uh, the young man from Corona, the Bagley. Oh, Mike, is it Michael Bagley? Marvin Bagley. Marvin third, Bagley, yeah. yes. 6'10", to <laughs> shoot it from three. Here's a drive, missed shot. Who got the rebound? And it's Brandon Brown, who has 17 points to lead all scores. Six and a half left to go here in the first half. Boy, Brown had to work hard to bring that ball out of backcourt. Open jumper, no. And the rebound belongs to Ashley and the Jagos of Tohona. Everage over to Walker. Walker, Ashley on the drive. Back out to Everage. Lob it in and a bad pass, and it was stolen by Russ Davis. And Jeff, I was talking about. Speaking long, of Corona. Yeah, I was going to say, I was talking to a longtime assistant coach here, obviously Ray Arvizu, and about Brandon Brown. He said there's quite a few schools interested. Um, I think he said he has one offer, but there are many more coming in. How you don't want a point guard like that? I mean, you said it. He had to work so hard to get across the court, but he made it look easy. Yeah. 5.47 on the clock. Here's the baseline drive by the Jagos. They come up short and another big rebound by Phoenix. That was one of the areas, I think, that has kept the Jagos in this game. They really controlled the boards early on, but right now Phoenix doing a much better job on the defensive boards. And a big reason, Russ Davis, who is in there now, number 34 for the Bears. Shaking and baking from the top of the key, and he got the shooter's touch. 19 for Brandon Brown, and this is their largest lead of seven. And Jeff, that's five hoops in a row for Mr. Brown. Jagos needs some offense. They lob it down low. They lose it out of bounds. I, this is going to be Phoenix College ball. Absolutely. And look who's checking back in. Anthony Topa, coach. Well, I'll take a 30-second timeout real quick. But, you know, watching Coach Gordon in the timeout, Chef, after that first timeout when he called the, called the full timeout, we are talking about the rebounds, completely frustrated with the way his team was boxing out. I mean, fine, if they're going to go straight up and they out-rebound you with their height, fine. But they weren't boxing out. The last few times down the court, we've seen it a little bit better. But, again, the Jagos in this game, and, Jeff, they probably could have the lead. They, they've missed quite a few shots from point-blank range. And at this level, you really don't, you don't expect that because they've had a few layups that just have not dropped for them. So there's five minutes and five seconds left to play in the first half. Phoenix College will come out with Conley, Topak, Meeker, of course, Brandon Brown, and Noah King. Jagos will counter with Kaba, Matlock, Devin White, David Everidge, and now in the game is the 6'6 competitor, South Dakota native, number 15, Jesse Brown. So you're set. And we're at the five minute mark. What a game so far, but Phoenix College now enjoying their largest lead of the contest, 29-22. Brown stripped away, no call on that one, and going down efforts for the big Tomahawk two-handed jam. And he's gonna get, a, he's gonna get a technical for holding on to the rim. In his defense, though, 
the way he went in for the jam, his lower body was swaying out away from it, and I think if he had yeah, let but go. Jeff, he was kind of he was kind of rocking, looking at the crowd. Too. I, I see what you're saying, 100%. Yeah. But he was kind of looking at the crowd when he was doing that too. Well, Brown missed the technical free throw. We get another one. 4:46 on the clock. 29-24, and Brandon wow. Brown missed both of them. That is surprising. There is a lot of uh, Jago's fans here in attendance tonight. Both sides of the gymnasium here at the Bears Den Phoenix College. I don't think there's an empty seat. Oh, Jeff, this gym is packed just like it was last year. The Bears, you see a lot of the student athletes here from other sports, from soccer, from volleyball out in support of this Phoenix College team. Brandon Brown. I mean, I would say phenomenal, but honestly, Jeff, I feel that's an insult to him. His ability to that initial move may be the best that we have seen out of anybody in this conference all year. Rejected by Topak, but he was fouled before the shot. Foul is going to go against Conley. So that's six field goals in a row PC's got from Brandon Brown and six out of the last seven. The only one was from Tokpa with the dunk earlier on the assist from who else? Brandon Brown. Well, it sends Devin White to the line. He missed the first one. White is yet the score for the Tohona Jagos. Jagos. 31-24 is our score with the defending national champions and the Gray uniforms on top. The winner of this game advances to Nationals. Second one, looks good, is good. So Devin White gets one of the two and that will reduce the lead to six. Brown, and a good job of getting that ball in. And now Kevin Davis over to Meeker and back to Brown. Four minutes, five seconds on the clock. Brown gets a high screen from Topak. Couldn't do anything with it. Works it over to King, back over to Brown. Brown, good crossover, the dish, and Topak has it again. A big time slam, 33-25. It's an eight point lead with 3.50 left to go here in the first. High arcing shot, no good. Sky rebound, Walker, turnaround, yes. 33-27, and we got a stop in play. Brandon Brown getting tied up underneath with Bengali Kaba, 3.39 on the clock. A six point lead. And they broke that full court press pretty yes. easy. Yeah, they sure did. Well, when you get that, that pressure in the backcourt, those long passes are vital. He pulls up for a jumper on the angle and nailed it. He has 23 points here in the first half. That's exactly what he had against the Artichokes the other night too. And he has almost outscored the Jagos. Up and under, reverse layup, and Everidge is heading to the line with 3.11 left to play. That is the 10th team foul against Phoenix College, which means that the Jagos are in the double bonus. Along with Mike Caratanuto, I'm Jeff Lowry. Welcome to MCTV Sports coverage of the Region 1 Division II Championship game. We're coming to you from Phoenix College near downtown Phoenix. Everett's first free throw, yes. He leads all to Hono scores with nine. Three minutes and 11 seconds on the clock. By the way, the Jagos as a team have seven fouls. As I said earlier, Phoenix with 10. Meeker to get it in, Noah King. Brown, double team, kind of forced his way through there and had the wherewithal to find Davis. He has had a phenomenal first half. Meeker, King, back to Brown. Six point lead, he's going for the basket. It rims off, rebound Jagos. Matlock quickly up out of backboard and he will take it all the way in and score. They need Matlock to get some more scoring here. 
If we're going to stay in it, they're within four. Here's Brown going all the way. Rebound. Loose ball picked up by Ashley. The Jagos can cut it to a one-possession game. Ashley, Everidge, the trailer, into the basket and scores. 35-33, timeout, Phoenix College with 2.22 left to play here in the first half. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. All right, back here at the Phoenix Bears Den, Phoenix College in downtown Phoenix. Along with Mike Caratonudo, Jeff Lowry. What a ball game so far, Mike. 35-33 as Phoenix College you know, defending their national championship. They want to get back the Nationals. They've lost to this Tohona team on two occasions this year. They're two regular season matchups. This is the third matchup between the two teams. And hey, I'll tell you what, this uh, Jago's team won't go away. They've trailed by as many as seven. Yeah, and it's a nice little 6-2 uh, run for them. Last, uh, this last two, three minutes, and they uh, are right back in this game. But uh, we're, you, were, you hit the nail on the head in the break, Jeff. Phoenix going to have to get some contributions from other players. Brandon Brown is on fire, but this team's going to have to do some scoring. Davis finds Noah King, and he couldn't knock it down, and the Jagos get the rebound. They wanted a travel call as the officials are letting him play. Here's Walker, and the drive by Kaba, and his shot, no. And it was actually tipped out of there by Lamar Walker. Walker looking for Everidge. Everidge loses the ball, and Meeker was tripped as he tried to steal wow. it. And they're going to give it back to Tohono, the visiting team, as they trail by two with 133 here in the first. Well, I mean, you can say incidental if he got tangled, but either way to me, tangled or not, it's not football. <laughs> I would say that's a foul, but that's just me. Lob it in, and it's stolen away by Kevin Davis. One on one, he'll take it into the hole with the left hand. Oh, what a play by Davis. 124 on the clock, it's a four point game, and Everidge will drive, count the basket and the foul. He's got 11, he has a chance to cut the lead to one. Stephen Green is coming back in for Phoenix College. He will replace Meeker. Green, their second leading scorer, averaging about 11 and a half points a game. Shoots for 37% from three. You know, Jeff, and another thing too, Brandon Brown has not taken a breather here in the first half. I know only 121 away from halftime, but I'm surprised that substitution slash 121 wasn't for him to kind of maybe get him an extra, you know, minute, and then obviously halftime. But I mean, Scottsdale—he took about a—he took about a three-minute breather in the uh, first half, and about a three-minute breather in the second half. But I mean, championship game. Best yep. players are going to want to stay on the court, so I don't think he wants to come off the court anyway. One ten on the clock. One point lead for Phoenix. Matt Gordon's team. Brandon Brown could have dished it off there to Hooks. He had him open on the baseline, elected to go strong, went up with the off hand, the left hand, and draws the foul. Now he missed two technical free throws a few minutes ago, 59 seconds on the clock. He goes to the line, he is an 80% free throw shooter, and he knocked that one down, he's got 24. Topak coming back in, Kevin Davis, so it's Davis, Kevin Davis that is, Brown, Topak, Stephen Green, and at the top of the key, actually at midcourt, number 22, Noah King. He knocks down both of them. He has 25 first half points, and the Phoenix College Bears lead by three, 39-36. Walker strong to the hole, had a handle on the rebound. Who's got it? It's Phoenix College. 
Well, 25 seconds on the clock. Sorry, Jeff Tokpai did a great job of cutting him off on that rebound, and that's one thing you get when Walker's on the court with Tokpa. Walker's got the height advantage, but the athleticism advantage might go to Tokpa. And Green, not a nice looking shot, may have forced it. He's trying to get into the rhythm. And Matt Gordon is a little upset with him for taking that shot. They had a play set up, I think, underneath. So the shot clock has been turned off, 30 seconds. And the Jagos might play for the last shot here. We're down to 20 seconds. But they are 11th in the conference in three-point percentage. This is Matlock. Their leading scorer averaging over 14 a game. He drives, goes up against Topa, got him up in the air, missed the shot. Three, two, one second. Here's the shot at the buzzer, good if it goes. And the shot was missed by Stephen Green as we head to halftime. Phoenix College with a slim three-point lead over the visiting Tohono Jagos, 39-36. Stay with us. We'll have more on MCTV Sports in just a moment. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on for dear life. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. And hey, welcome back to Phoenix College as we bring you coverage of the Region 1 Division 2 championship between Tohona out of the uh, Southern Arizona, a couple hours out of the Tucson area, for those of you wondering. And of course, Phoenix College, the defending national champions. The Bears with a 39-36 lead. Tohono will start things off here in the second half. And we'll give you their starting five here in a moment. Here's a big sky rebound by Dion Hooks. So it's Ashley Quigley, Matlock, Everidge, and Walker. The starting five for the Jagos of Tohono. Meeker in the lane for Phoenix College. He's got it. He scored six early points. And now Conley, they need to get him going. And that one rimmed out no good. And the rebound belongs to the Jagos who really dominated the boards early in the game. And in the first half, doubled up Phoenix College and the big left hand by David Everidge who has 17 points and seven rebounds on the game and it's back to a one point affair, 39-38. Let's give you the five out there for the Phoenix College Bears. They do not, they do start Brandon Brown who had 25 points, which is a career high for the most points in a half. Meeker, who takes a shot, can't get it. Conley, hooks and keeps that one alive. Meeker strong to the hole, but couldn't get it over the outstretched hands of Walker, who promptly throws it away for the Jago. Yeah, Walker got a little frustrated there, Jeff, and just threw it away, but Meeker, we're talking about contributions, saying about getting Conley going, and Meeker looking for his shot early on, and it's right there. I mean, just a touch just a little bit off, but you're right, if they start taking more pressure off of Brandon Brown, who's inbounding the ball, it'll actually benefit him probably even more. So again, it's Brown, King, Connolly, Meeker, and Hooks for Phoenix College to start the second half. Phoenix College up by one. They led by three at the half, 18-20 on the clock. He splits two defenders, has it rejected on the shot by Walker, and here come the Jagos, who have not led yet, and the shot will not go. Meeker comes up with a big rebound. Splits two defenders, and he's going to bring it up quickly out of backcourt. A two-on-one break. Work it out to Conley, and offensive charging. Offensive foul against Meeker. That's a big turnover. Well, and Meeker had the right idea, the three-pointer for Conley. He said, but well, you know what, Jeff? I know it doesn't count, and it's a foul. It's a fourth on Meeker, but the point the basket doesn't count but look at that Conley got in rhythm right there hit that shot that's all he needed to do yep and I guarantee you he could probably go on a nice little uh, shooting spree for the Bears well Russ Davis is coming in as Mike said Meeker Travis Meeker of Phoenix College now with four fouls as the first team foul Everidge who has had a great game here today draws the foul he'll be on the floor non-shooting wow Brandon Brown calling for an offensive foul feeling that Dion Hooks was in perfect position there Jeff and I don't know, I know you're always gonna go to bat to your teammate. 
for your teammate, but I think Brown's got a, might have a really good point there. Yeah. So Dion Hooks is out of the game, and he's got three fouls. And yeah, Noah King, the only other person with this lineup on the floor. Oh, no. Noah King and uh, Anthony Tokba score points. Ashley for three, and the Vegas have taken their first lead of the night. That comes at the 17-40 mark here in the second. 41-39, Jagos. Noah King, bounce feed to Topak. He'll get the underhanded flip, and they lose the ball. And I believe this is going to be Phoenix College's basketball. No, they're going to call a foul here. On uh, Tejano, yeah. Yeah, that average dived in. It almost took uh, Russ Davis's legs out from underneath him. So Everidge is going to be assessed his second foul. Team's first, 17-20 on the clock. Phoenix College trailing by two. Brown has to go all the way back to the baseline on the other end of the floor to get the inbound pass. Good defense by Matlock, and we're going to get a foul, and Matlock can't believe it, and I don't blame him. Yeah, I mean, both sides now have had to deal with the Phoenix College there, and now Matlock, and they're going to say the contact that obviously Brandon Brown has to be able to, I guess, advance the ball, but Matlock, look, he was sliding well there. Brandon Brown open for the long jumper, and no, Topak battles for the rebound, dives, he saves it. Back to Conley, over to Brown. He'll take a three, he'll hit the three. They regained the lead, his 28th point. He had 25 in the first half, Brandon Brown, and Phoenix College with a one-point lead. And, Jeff, and a jump ball. That was all set up by the hustle there by Anthony Topa, using every inch of his 6'7 frame to get the ball, tip it back out to Conley, and he knew Brown most likely wasn't going to miss two in a row. And he buries that three to give his, put his team back in front by one. 16-48 left to go here in regulation time. A 42-41 lead for the Phoenix College Bears. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Back with Mike Garrett I'm Jeff Lowry, MCTV Sports, and what a barn burner we've had so far through the first uh, 23 minutes of basketball. 16.48 on the clock, the visiting Jagos. Down by one, they took their first lead at the 17-40 mark. It was a short-lived lead. Now it's 42-41 Phoenix College for the Region 1 Division II Championship. One of these teams will go to Nationals, and it's a rematch of last year's Region 1 D2 Championship game. Here's Walker on a jumper from 14, and he knocked it down baseline right, and they regain the lead, their second lead. And our second lead change in a matter of a minute. 16.31 on the clock, Brandon Brown, 28 points. 41 is his career high. That came in a triple overtime game against Glendale, but he finds a wide open jump shooter on the edge, and Davis airballed it, and the Jagos can go up by three. Wigley in the lane, kiss it off the glass, couldn't get the roll, and Everidge battling in there. He has 17 points, eight rebounds. He has had a monster for uh, first half, 15 and seven in the first half, and he's picked right up where he left off here in the second. Absolutely, Jeff. And like I said, in the first half, though, the only thing, he's got to put those layups in. I know he got fouled there, but he had a chance for the N1 and just could not put it in from right at the rim. Three of his 18 points have been scored in the second half. He has two team fouls. The Jagos doubled up Phoenix College in the rebounding department in that first half, and I think that was a big reason why they stayed in the game. Russ Davis hauls it in, all the way down to Conley, launching a three. Can he get it? He does. Boy, did they need that. Conley nails his first field goal of the day. It's 45-44. 
Walker, jump shot, rims out. Phoenix College, couple of big rebounds. Brandon Brown, 28 points. Got hit from behind, no call, out of bounds, and they're going to give it to the Jagos, and Brandon Brown can't believe it. Yeah, and but Jeff, the three-pointer by Conley, what did I say? Didn't count on the foul. He hit it. And that's all a three-point shooter or jump shooter needs is just to hit that first one, and that basket seems even bigger and bigger. And well, you're talking about Connolly, and he's got a high arcing shot, one of the highest arcing shots I've ever seen. Nice drive, couldn't get it to go. Rebound, Jagos, and a good job by Emmett Sloan, but then traveling on the play was Corey Quigley after the pass from Sloan, but a good job by the sophomore guard, Emmett Sloan, getting in there. Well, I don't know if Quigley really traveled. I think it was a makeup call from underneath the hoop because I think the travel was on Sloan when he went down, Jeff, but uh, like, you know, you've worked with me for years. I, I can still never see traveling. So either way, they get called for the travel. Noah King with the basketball. Phoenix College clinging to a one-point lead as we approach the 15-minute mark, second half. King on the wing. Pull-up jumper, yes, that's a nice-looking shot. He's got four, and the lead is up to three again at 47-44. Well, Jeff, Coach Gordon must have heard you about getting other people involved because, yeah, Brandon Brown's touched the ball offensively, and I know he hit that three, but at the same time, he's not controlling the dribble the whole time. So Quigley is called for his second foul, third team foul. Both teams with three team fouls. And another big rebound by Russ Davis. The rebounding has improved, at least in the last couple of minutes for Phoenix College, who owns a three-point lead. Yeah, and that's one thing like we talked about. Coach Gordon stressed in the first half was just they weren't boxing out. They weren't getting a body in front of anyone down low, height advantage or not, get in their way. And instead of the past few minutes, they've done a better job of that. Brandon Brown launches, can't buy it, Quigley battling, and there's Russ Davis again with another board. He's had three or four rebounds in the second half alone. Connolly, who knocked down a three to regain the lead for Phoenix a moment ago. They lead by three. Get it over to Davis, and his three ball is good. Super trio time for the Bears, and they now lead it 50 to 44. Second largest lead of the game, and down on the other end, the Jagos going up strong to the basket. They'll draw the foul. Devin White heading to the charity stripe. And now I stand corrected as it was before the shot. Foul was on the floor with 14 minutes and one second left to play in regulation time here. Second half, 50 to 44, Phoenix College. Tohono with the basketball as they inbound. Devin White with the left-handed shot. He knocked it down straight away. So Devin White with three points. 50 to 46, Brown going back to work, rejected by Walker, and they can cut it to a one possession game. They want to run, here's Matlock, bringing it up into the forecourt. Give it up, Everidge up against the land of the Giants, not one, he gets two rebounds, gets the third shot, and count the basket in the foul. What a night for David Everidge, who came in here averaging 13 points and five rebounds, but here tonight, it's more like 20 and 10. Absolutely, Jeff. He's had a phenomenal, phenomenal game. He set 20 points, but again, from close at the rim, I know I sound like a broken record. He is just not finishing. And for Coach Vargas, I mean, it's got to be a little bit of a worry, a little bit of a frustration. He's got 21 points, 11 rebounds, 13-33 on the clock. And that three-point play by the Jagos of Tohono Pulls them to within one at 50 to 49 as Brandon Brown leads all scores with 28. He had 25 in the first half. The next leading score for Phoenix College is number 32, Travis Meeker with six. Davis with the ball. Russ drives the middle, stops in the lane, has to give it up to King. Back out to Davis, his second three of the second half. It rips around and goes in. You talk about a home court roll, and that's exactly what Davis got, but he will take it. Baseline drive, Kaba up and under, couldn't get it to go, couldn't get it over the, the hands of Hooks, or rather, actually, Topa 
who went up strong to block it, and the end result is a jump ball, and it will be Phoenix College basketball. Timeout on the court. 12.50 left to play. It's a four-point lead for the defending national champion. If you want to see the other side of the earth, then you need to journey 180 degrees from where we are. Why travel when 180 View does it for you? Tune in and take an excursion from Arizona to the Ukraine. You'll meet fascinating people, learn about cultures, and explore interesting places with 180 View. Find out the intriguing lifestyle contrasts between cowboys and Cossacks. Learn the distinction between Arizona's native plants and those found in the Ukraine. Marvel at the amazing architectural differences between Arizona's Montezuma Castle and Ukraine's Sophia's Cathedral. Explore geographical variations between Arizona and the Ukraine as we follow students on field trips of discovery. 180 View brings you interesting stories about people, cultures, and places in Arizona and the Ukraine. 180 View is seen on MCTV, Cox Cable Channel 115. For airtimes, go to maricopa.edu slash MCTV. 12.50 on the clock. We're in the second half of this Region 1 Division 2 championship game between the Phoenix College Bears, defending champions, national champions, and the Jagos out of Tohono. And the lead is 53-49 in favor of Phoenix College. Phoenix College on that last play before our break, it was not a jump ball. They got the timeout. And so the alternate possession still with Phoenix College. Brandon Brown, 28 points, goes right up strong, and he's going to be fouled on the uh, initial drive there, and the foul is going up against Bengali Kaba. Yeah, Kaba at 6'5", guarding the 5'10", Brown, trying to put a little length on him, but he had no problem going by him. And when Walker rotates over, that time Brown tried to go high, but you have to get it to Walker's man, especially if it's Tokpa, who you know will throw it down with authority. Brandon Brown with the basketball. Phoenix College four-point lead. Played his high school basketball at Cesar Chavez. They had some big years when he was there. They had a nice little run over there yeah. and some state championship appearances. He launches along NBA three, and it just barely went. Missed. Four-point lead, 12-19 on the clock. Jagos can cut it to a one-point or a one-possession lead here. This is Najee Matlock. Only six points in this game. He's a... Leader in points this year with 14. And we're going to get a blocking foul. Good call there on Kevin Davis. That is the 15th foul for Phoenix College. The Jagos have four team fouls with 12.02 on the clock. Well, again, it can come down to free throw shooting. Two things you always hear X coaches talk about X factors have rebounds and free throw shooting. And so far, Phoenix College has been. Very good on the free throw shooting, and Tejano's been much better on the rebounding. Well, if you're wondering, the, the Jagos are eighth in the conference in free throw percentage, while Phoenix College is fifth. So not a big difference there. But the big difference in this game, I think the rebounding has really done a great job for this Tohono team and keeping them in. Up and under move, Topa. What a sky rebound by Davis, but he lost it. And it's a four point lead for Phoenix as they come back down on defense. Head fake didn't work. He looked up, and Matlock looked up and found Topak there, 6 7 competitor. And the leading shot blocker on the Phoenix College basketball team, Conley, who has a three pointer in the second half, but they need, they are in need another one, I think, from him. Brown around the high screen, baseline, corner, jumper, three-point range, Kevin Davis. That is the fifth three-point play here in the second half for Phoenix College. You think they rely on that, that part of their arsenal? Which, well, like I said, Davis at 42.8%, Conley at 46.3%, second and third, or third and fourth, pardon me, in the conference. So, yeah, they, uh, they rely on it, but they are Extreme, extreme sharp shooters as they have another one right here. And a great job as Connolly missed, but Davis tipped it out. Russ Davis to teammate Kevin Davis, and Phoenix College has a new shot clock. 
56-49. Brandon Brown over to Conley. Great initial move. Kisses it off the glass. Can't get it. And the rebound by Walker. Walker had five rebounds in the first half. He's got three more here for eight in the game. And, boy, that's a nice-looking pull-up jump shot by Najee Madlock, his first basket here in the second half. And, boy, do they need a, a scoring contribution from Najee Matlock. 56-51, Phoenix College trying to go to the Nationals for the seventh time in the 11 years under Matt Gordon. Up and under move in the lane, a thing of beauty. He's got 30 points, five here in the second half. Brandon Brown gives his team a 58-51 lead. We're going to get a foul underneath. It doesn't feel like it, Mike, but this is the largest lead, tied for the largest lead Phoenix has had here tonight. Yeah, and the, the few times they have gotten up, I mean, they're up by seven now, and they've been up by five. Tejano's always had an answer. He said, under 10 minutes to go now, 9.32 left, and if you're Tejano again, Keep, keep pounding the ball under the glass because that has worked out very, very well for them. Devin White over to Matlock. We'll see if he becomes a more integral part of the offense. Nice spin move. Average draws the foul. And he's heading to the line. He's got 21 points to lead all Tohono players here tonight. Coming to you from the Bears Den on the campus of PC Phoenix College in downtown Phoenix. This is the Region 1. Division II championship. These two teams met last year. Phoenix College came out on top in that game, 87-69. So Coach Gordon trying to talk to Anthony Tokpa to settle down, and he did kind of buy the head fake. He changed his shot, but he feels that the, the momentum and the contact was initiated by, uh, by uh, Everett, pardon me, Jeff, and that's why he's frustrated as he's coming out. But again, tough call there on that, uh, on that foul. The free throw is good. 58-53 in favor of Phoenix College. They're getting full court pressure. Russ Davis in trouble, and they tie him up. And that's a jump ball. Excellent defense by Bengali Kaba of the Jagos. Inbounding the basketball, all alternate possession. It gives it back to Phoenix College. Of course, you hate to give up that alternate possession, but it's better than the turnover. Brandon Brown out of Cesar Chavez. That's in South Phoenix High School. Sophomore guard. A no look behind the head shot. And the rebound, Dion Hooks of Phoenix College, and he draws the foul. That is the fifth team foul against Tohono. And this is going to be a two-shot foul with a five-point lead for Phoenix College. Yeah, I mean, Brandon Brown, like you said in pregame, Jeff, the ACCAC player of the year. And you can't really, I said, with what he's meant to his team, but not just, I mean, obviously scoring, but distributing the ball, how he opens the court up for everybody else. You can't, you can't deny that he definitely is the uh, player of the year. That was Hooks' first basket. First two points of the ball game. And the lead is back to seven, which marks the largest lead. Hand off, Kaba in the land of the Giants and out of bounds, last touch by Phoenix College. One observation, especially here in the second half, every time the Tohono has tried to attack the basket, attack the paint, they have been turned away for the most part. Average, and he forced that one up, and that's just that good, strong defense underneath by Phoenix College, and now Brandon Brown in his 30 points. Finds a wide open, Russ Davis, his three would go. His third of the second half, he's got nine points, and they're all here in the second half, and Phoenix College now has their largest lead of 10. They're gonna get the ball back. Yeah, Tejano throws it away there. You're talking about Russ Davis getting a home court roll, Jeff. You, you very rarely nice. see three pointers Roll around the rim like that, hit the backboard. His, like you said, I've done that now twice and has given a 10-point cushion to the Bears as their crowd is getting louder. And just think how good you would be if you had those rolls. <laughs> oh, wow. The first shot fired by Jeff Lowry. 8.06 on the clock, 10-point lead. Davis again, the hot hand. 
his fourth Super Trio of the second half. And all the momentum in the world belongs to the defending national champion, Phoenix College Bears. They try to counter with a three and they can't get it. The Jagos need a timeout. And what a second half for Russ Davis. He has 12 points, four threes, and five rebounds. And tremendous hustle plays all around for Russ Davis. 34, number 34. He'll take another one. Is this his fifth? No. And the rebound belongs to Ashley. Full court passed out. They alley oop it. Brandon Brown broke it up. Slapped it off the backboard. And now Phoenix College wants to run. Jagos get back on defense. This is Noah King. King looking for Brown. He'll lob it over to Hooks and now gets it back. Top of the key goes Noah King and a timeout Phoenix College with 7.09 left to play. Their largest lead of 13. We'll be back on MCTV right after this. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure is too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just please don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Well, we're back here at the Bears' den. Phoenix College reaching one Division II championship game. Uh, a very impressive run here by the Phoenix College Bears. Uh, the game was tied at the, all the way back at the 16-minute uh, mark. Actually, the Jagos had a one-point lead on two occasions, but after they took a 45-44 lead, it has been all Phoenix College in the shooting percentage differential is staggering. Phoenix College hitting over 50% of their shots here in the second half, while the Jagos are right around 20%. Brown launches a three and adds on to his 30-point oh. night. He's got 33. And Chef, he held the follow-through up like coaches want to do, what, what, always want you to do. Maybe a little bit for show for the home crowd, but uh -huh. he, he's taking those NBA threes and been close all night, and he buried that one. 6.36 on the clock. Brandon Brown, 33 points. That's a game high. David Everidge on the other side has 23. He needs eight points to tie his career high. Oh. And he is five points away from breaking his playoff high. Well, he's back at the free throw line. Talking about Everidge, 63% free throw shooter. He's had a great night, but he needs some help underneath. He missed it, it was a one and one Hooks with the rebound. The rebounding improved. Once the rebounding improved, it seemed like Phoenix College's game just came together. Well, a huge part of the game. We talk about it all the time. If you're not going to box out as Brown is just He's unconscious it right now, you have got to be kidding me. That was probably a half a foot behind the NBA three-point line. 72-53. The driving left hand by Devin White. He'll draw the foul. And the foul is going to go against Kevin Davis of Phoenix. It's a two-shot foul. Well, Brown one point away from his uh, 37 from the in the semifinal game against Scottsdale. So, <laughs> I mean, literally, Jeff, what can he not do? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Phoenix is on a 28-10 run. Oh, and they'll get the rebound, and this is Hooks. Over to Brandon Brown, 36 points. His next field goal will give him a career playoff high. He has had playoff scores of 28 in the semifinals, or uh, I'm sorry, 37 in the semifinal. Yeah. Yep. It could have a 40 point night here tonight. 18 point lead, that marks the biggest lead of the night. And the missed shot will give it back to the Jagos. 5.30 on the clock, launching the long three. That's not their forte. And another rebound, the second half rebound by Russ Davis. And don't forget, it's Russ Davis. I mean, Brandon Brown has had a great night as he's going to be fouled here. They have one to give the Jagos. That's their 16 foul. But where would this lead would not be there if it wasn't for Russ Davis of Phoenix College? Yeah, Russ Davis. We talked about a contribution from somebody else, and in that first part of the first half, like you said, Coach Gordon makes the adjustment. Yeah, Brandon Brown was touching the ball, but Noah King was kind of 
being the uh, architect of the offense, and that got Russ Davis going. He hit that one three where rolled around the rim, hit the second one, but then getting the rebounds, like you said, just absolutely dominant from the field. And then Brandon Brown starts to tack on, and it's just it's <laughs> been downhill from there, unfortunately, for Tahana, who played, like you said, such a solid, had a solid game plan. Just couldn't, just not able to uh, extend on their lead. And Davis hits again. He's got 14 points. They're all here in the second half, and the lead is 20. That is the biggest lead of the ball game. The Jagos led in this second half on two occasions, but only by one. Baseline pass, and the drive by Quigley. He'll draw a foul and head to the charity strike. So it would look, unless a major collapse, that the Phoenix College Bears are going to win their seventh region championship under Matt Gordon. Seven and 11 years for him, so, uh, man, unbelievable. And I think two of those was because South Mountain had one, probably the best player maybe oh, in league Mike history, Craig, yeah. Mike Craig. Had a triple-double that game, right? I, yeah, I think he did yes, have a triple-double. Both free throws good there. 74-56, and the inbound, the inbound intercepted and put back in there by Quigley as you got a shot at Matt Gordon. This team has done a great job, but they got to finish it out. The lead is now 16 as they give up four unanswered points. Davis for three, feeling that magic touch, but not that time. See Coach Gordon telling this team to kind of maybe settle down a little bit, use more of that shot clock. The clock is your best friend right now with this lead. Here's a jump shot, but that one is off. And Devin White has just been pulled all night long, unfortunately, for the Jagos, one of their leading scorers. Coming in, they had four players in double figure scoring. The Jagos, Davis, Brandon Brown with the basketball. Heating up some of the clock, 15 on the shot clock. Davis has it, top of the key, going up against Walker. Handoff, Kevin Davis, out to Noah. Over to Russ Davis again, and he's done it. It's another three, his fifth three-pointer of the game. He has 17 second-half points, and the lead is 19 for Matt Gordon and his Phoenix College Bears. 77-58, three and a half left to go. Here is my handle, and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. You're watching the 2015 Region 1 Division 2 Championship. Phoenix College Bears, defending national champions, ranked six coming in. A sizable 19 point lead over the team out of Southern Arizona, the Tohono Jagos. They beat them by an 87 69 score last year, and it's starting to look like it's going to be the same result here in 2015. Jay goes with the basketball, try to kiss it Man. off the glass, and hooks with a big rebound. And Jeff, I'm not trying to hammer the Jagos. They've had a solid season. They're a very solid team, but you cannot miss that many layups against a below average team. A team like Phoenix College, you get to the rim pretty much unchallenged, and they just haven't been able to finish at the rim. For Coach Vargas, he's taken timeouts at the right time. He's let his team play through some stuff. They had the one point lead like we talked about, but it's just a to me, it's that mental block of not finishing at the rim. Yeah, you got to have short-term memory, but time after time after time, just missing one, one two-foot shots, and got to be a little frustrating for Coach Vargas. And one of the keys going in, Mike, and I don't think there's any doubt about it, this is a team that shot 40% from the field during the regular season. Now, part of that equation is you know, you're going up against some of the weaker teams in the conference. That doesn't tell the whole story what, what you're doing against the upper echelon teams like Phoenix College. But it's a, it's a team that we talked about, beat Phoenix College twice. Yeah. And 
but they could not come in here and not at least shoot 40% because I get the feeling they shot 38% in the first half and they it was a close game at the half. Right. If they come out here and shoot anywhere near that percentage in the second half, this is a different ballgame. Right. Well, and if they up it to even 40, 42, 44 percent, you start getting in that range. Yeah, but they're yeah. under 20 percent right. in the second half. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you need, you can't, you can't do that. But like I said, a lot of those from right at the rim too. And Phoenix College has just been absolutely on fire from behind the arc, including this man Davis, who gets it in the Kevin Davis, and his left hand is good, and it's 80 to 58, a 22 point lead. What a second half for Phoenix College, flexing their muscles and taking this championship. And a foul underneath as Bengali Kaba draws the foul. Foul is going to go against Noah King, and that is his first team foul. Both teams in the bonus. Phoenix College is actually committed 10 fouls. They're in the uh, sending the Tohono team into the double bonus with 2.30 left to play here in the second half. Kaba at the line, knocked down his first one. He knocked down his second one. And it's back to a 20-point deficit. So the winner will advance to Nationals, Danville, Illinois. I want to say you're correct, yes. 2.22. Coach Gordon telling his team just, hey, burn up some time. But Brandon Brown goes strong to the basket. He has just set a career high of points in a game, his playoff high. He's got 38 points. He's three away from tying his career college high. And with 2.05 left to go, it's back to a 22-point lead for the Bears. And if you're Matt Gordon, obviously you see him right there talking to his uh, Phoenix College team as they get a timeout. But yeah, Jeff, I mean, it seemed like such a close game, and, and Tejano was being physical. Love the way they were playing in the first half. Like I said, outside of I said missing from at the rim, but the rebounds, just taking it to Phoenix College down low, working the ball around. Yeah, a few of their defensive rotations, leaving the wrong person open. A Brandon Brown, a Troy Conley, even Meeker when he hit a few shots, and then. Uh, obviously, Russ Davis, he's been a little slow in rotation. He's a Phoenix College, well, students there, but other athletes. And But Tejano had the right idea. I mean, you beat yep. this team twice. You knew you could go down low on him. You knew you had the height advantage. Be patient. Obviously, you know Brandon Brown's going to get his. So in that aspect, I mean, now that uh, now that Davis has 17, but at the same time, let, other pe let Brandon Brown get his. Shut down everybody mm -hmm. else. Don't, you know, go one-on-one -on -one with Brandon Brown. He throws the ball out, rock on. But easier said than done. I'm sitting here, I don't have to guard him either. Well, he's had balanced scoring. He scored 13 in the second half. He had 25 in the first half. ACCAC player of the year, number three, Brandon Brown, and he hasn't sat one minute. You know, he was a player of the national tournament last year too. He was the MVP of the tournament. We forgot to mention that, just not assuming that they were gonna go back because I thought Tejano definitely could keep this game close and maybe win it late. So Tohono comes out aggressive with Kaba, who knocks down a two-point field goal to cut it to an 82-62 game. He's got nine points. Phoenix College inside of two minutes. Brown taking it in the paint. Working the clock, gives it up to Davis, and his three is no good. Jago's trailing by 20 with 135. Stolen away. Here's Brown on a breakaway. He will go up strong. He's got 40. 84-62. We're going to get a substitution here for Tohono as they counter with Keenan Keems, Ignacio Chavez, and Eric Stark. A nice gesture here by head coach Matt Vargas, assisted by Mark Berry and the former coach over at Chandler Gilbert last year, Michael Stewart. And Phoenix College, we got to give the credit to the great coaching staff of Matt Gordon as this long three, no good, getting in there to get the rebound, the step out of bounds he did. Nice effort by Eric Stark. 
as Steven Nelson now checks in. But for Phoenix College, got to give a lot of credit to Ray Arvisu, Carlo Camacho, Che Jones, Ryan Mason. They've done a sensational job. They've been here for many years. And Brandon Brown is heading to the charity stripe. Do you think that he knows that 41 is his career high? Probably. Well, if he makes both of these, he's an 80% free throw shooter on the regular season. And there he is, ACC, AC Player of the Year, National Championship Tournament MVP a year ago when Phoenix College won it all. And that's what the crowd's chanting, Jeff, is MVP. Oh, as he missed the front end of the one and one. So 113 on the clock. Tohono has many of their players in there that don't normally get a lot of playing time. Now Brown's going to come out get the ovation from the uh, crowd as Coach Gordon is the first one there to greet him here on the sidelines, giving him a big hug. 40 points here tonight. No doubt about it, he'll be the tournament most valuable player. <laughs> yeah, you go 37 and 40 back to back. And that might be a record in this in this uh, region one. Loose ball picked up by Phoenix College, and we're inside a minute. 84-62, Phoenix College. They're going to win the region one division two championship for the seventh time under head coach Matt Gordon. Noah King, what a second half effort. We were. 39 to 36 in favor of the Bears at halftime. And getting the shot off the bench but couldn't knock it down was Louis Lopez. Lopez has been here to your player for Matt Gordon and you know, one of the toughest practice players he said he had. Well, Steven Nelson coming off the bench, the freshman out of Winslow, Arizona. Hanging out with the Eagles. Absolutely. Down to the final five seconds. Lopez will be fouled with 2.9 seconds. That'll delay the celebration. And this place is going to go nuts when the zeros come up on the board. Phoenix College, 84, Tohono 65. Louis Lopez at the line from South Mountain High School. Yeah, and to wrap up about Lopez, Coach Gordon talking about last year, you know, didn't play a lot. but practice wise I mean always helping guys out hey so and so likes to do this on the bench just involved in the game as he missed that uh, free throw there but just very very smart as it goes to zeros and it's all over from the Bears den in Phoenix the Phoenix College Bears are region one division two champions in 2015 our final score Phoenix College 84 to Hono 65 Stay with us for our post-game show coming up next on MCTV Sports. Maricopa Now takes you inside the classrooms where students put their passion into practice and gives you a front row seat to the talent taking center stage. Maricopa Now introduces you to the programs and people that make a difference in your community. Get up close and personal with the desert dwellers who support student research. Tune in and learn how to make a new favorite dish. Maricopa Now every day on Cox Cable Channel 115. Check out our website for times. Two. 
to the game with inside Maricopa Sports. From the gridiron to track and field, the ninth inning to the winning goal. Inside Maricopa Sports brings you the excitement of Maricopa College's sports. Get up close and personal with athletes and coaches. Plus, meet the unsung heroes of the game. Join us on the field and behind the scenes on Inside Maricopa Sports. Only on MCTV, Cox Cable, Channel 115. All right, welcome back to the Bears Den Phoenix College, where the Phoenix College Bears wins 84-65. And uh, Coach Matt Gordon joins me now. Congratulations on your seventh Region 1 championship. Thank you very much. It was a big one this year. Today, This year was a little tougher than it's been in the past, being defending national champs. You know, the pressure was a lot more than we had. We weren't just another school. Um, we had a big target on our backs for, for our guys to, to, to roll through the playoffs like almost 20 points both games. And um, 
to go 19 and 3 in the conference and win the conference outright. It's just an unbelievable year, but we got unfinished work in Danville. We got to defend our title. Now, this team, uh, Tohono, beat you guys twice in the regular season. Uh, what did you, going into this game, did you feel like you had to do differently that you didn't do in those first two games? Brandon scored 40. Okay. That helps. That helps. But we changed our game plan. Um, we had tried to slow it down. Uh, the first two times didn't work very well. We tried to speed him up this time, play a lot more aggressively. Um, and Brandon made shots. I mean, Brandon scores 25 in the first half, but we couldn't, and nobody else was doing anything. And then Russ steps up in the second half with Troy. I think they had 23 together in the second half, and those are our two other scorers. So those guys came up big, and Brandon still did his thing at 15. So, you know, it was more balanced effort, which really helped. Where does uh, a performance like this and the season that he had and, and going back to last year, where does this put Brandon Brown, you think, maybe, at least in our conference uh, of the all-time greats? Well, oh, he's the best player, I think, ever to play at Phoenix College. He broke the all-time scoring record last game. He's second in school history in assists, first in steals, first in made field goals, and first in free throws made. So um, I'd say he's the best player in our school history. I'm sure he's probably the best Division II player in the conference history. Um, the conference has been around a long time, but since they went Division II in 86, I don't think there's anybody better. Mike Craig might have been more dominating, but Brandon's the best player. Well, Coach, congratulations on the victory. Uh, I know that uh, this team coming in from Southern Arizona gave you all that uh, you could handle there for about uh, 25 minutes, but you guys uh, really came through in the end. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Great year. Proud of my guys. Really, really proud of them. Like I said, we got four more games left. All right, when we come back, uh, Mike Caratanuto will have Russ Davis on MCTV Sports. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on for dear life. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. All right, back here at Phoenix College, the Bears win 84 to 65. And joining me, the freshman, Russ Davis. And Russ, obviously, congratulations on a great game. S no points in the first half. It's a close game. But you came out looking for your shot in the second half. 17 points. What was Coach saying to you guys at halftime just to kind of get the rest of you guys going? Because obviously, Brandon was having another solid game. Yeah, I mean, he was telling us, you know, Brandon couldn't be the only one contributing in points because I think he had like 25, something like that at halftime. So he's saying he needed, we needed somebody to step up. So I knew I could really get in there and take my shots. I got my first one to fall, and after I hit the first one, I just knew I wanted to, wanted to let it fly. And this is a Tejano team that obviously you struggled against just a little bit. I mean, during the season, you lose two games to them, two tough regular season games. Tough to beat a team the third time, but coming into the game, what was Coach, Coach's message to you guys? Because he's obviously been here 11 straight years, but what was his message to you guys just to keep you guys calm? Um, well... Before the game, or before when we were preparing, he told us that, I mean, we've played Tohono Odom for 80 minutes before, and that we beat them for 60 minutes. So those, those other 20 minutes in the game were just mental lapses, stuff like that. So we knew that we could win. We knew we just had to, you know, stay together and not let up at the end, because they like to press. So, you know, we had to make sure we don't throw the ball away and all that. So I think we did a good job. Coach did a good job. Well, and you're obviously used to coming from championships. We're talking about it. I mean, coming from Corona del Sol. But to go back now to the national tournament and for a chance for Phoenix College to defend a national title after being the first Division II school to win a championship last year. But now you guys win the conference outright this year. But to go back to defend a national title, I mean, what's, what's this ride been like for you? And what's it going to mean if you guys can overcome that hurdle and defend the title? Well, it's been really fun for me. I know it's fun for everybody. Everybody. And I always see there's five guys in our team that won, won the national tournament last year, and they all have really big rings. So I know us freshmen want to go get one of those. So I think everybody will just band together, and we'll have a good four games in the national tournament. And then, I mean, you touched on Brandon. Obviously, you know, he leads in scoring, but he, he moves the ball so well. He gets rid of the ball. But, I mean, just playing with somebody like that, I mean, what does he mean for your guys' team? Oh, he's huge. I mean, for shooters, he, he can get you open because they have to help off of him. So, I mean, people, people when he drives in the lane, you know, collapse on him. So that just leaves me open, leaves Troy open. It was really fun playing with him. I've enjoyed it this year. 
obviously congratulations on the victory. Phoenix College, like Jeff said, headed back to the national tournament, Danville, Illinois. We'll step aside here real quick on MCTV, and Jeff and I will wrap it up here from Phoenix College where the Bears are going back to the national championship. Don't worry, 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. All right, we're back here at Phoenix College. What a game we saw. The final score really doesn't tell the whole story. 84-65 in favor of the Phoenix College Bears. But, Michael, uh, there was a nip and tuck game for uh, quite a bit of time in that second half. But then uh, our uh, post-game guest, uh, Russ Davis, uh, took over. He had a multitude of threes, including five three-pointers in the second half alone. The 40 points from Brandon Brown, the great inside defense, and the Bears are heading back to Nationals. Yeah, I mean, and just listening to Russ Davis talk, I mean, so Brandon Brown will get you open. People see the points and think, oh, he's not passing the ball. Well, we've seen him a lot a few times this year, Jeff, and we know he gets his players open. Russ Davis said it perfectly. I mean, Troy Conley hit the three, Russ Davis hit the five. He said he was, he said he felt lucky that he hit those. I'm like, yeah, I, I doubt it. You're lucky. But, yeah, I mean, for Tejano, you're right. I mean, they had the right game plan. They went down low. They beat this team twice. It wasn't a lack of confidence for the Jagos. It was just Phoenix College in this game coach Gordon's been there and you know turning over every two years or not 11 straight times in this game yep. he knows what it takes he called timeouts when he had to he let his team play through it when they had to and just like you said in the end Tejano missed too many easy shots and I think psychologically that got to him but the other side of that is Phoenix College capitalized on every shot they can make and then once they like I said once in the second half Brandon Brown was wasn't really the facilitator the first part got everybody else going but yet at the same time when they needed him I mean that NBA three he hit I mean that was just the exclamation point for the Bears absolutely and you talk about uh, Tejano this is a team that has been in this region one championship two years in a row they're a program uh, they're an up and coming program they are and I mean coach has obviously done a great job there yep. coach Vargas coach Vargas yeah they've done done a great job their fans I mean look how great the community travels that's what you love to see I mean they were rocking in this gym yeah they applauded their team runners up again I mean it is unfortunate but it is still a great season for the Jagos. like I said only four years of existence the first year they were a little bit under 500 weren't really that good but the next the last three years yep. like you said it's just been coach Vargas has them on the up and up and it's a team like you said it's it, there's going to be turnover but at the same same time they keep winning they'll get these recruits and you got to love this rivalry with the Bears Jeff oh absolutely and you know you talk about the legacy that Phoenix College has has built over the last 10 years in fact they're the only team in Arizona junior college team to go to nationals seven out of a 10 year span uh, even though Coach Gordon is in his 11th year. Right. And all 11 years, I mean, he told me in the semifinal, he goes, he goes, hey, not bad, 11 for 11, being in the championship game. Yeah, yeah. And you think about that, I mean, people say dynasties. It would be the toughest at this level, yeah. not just because we cover, but you know, I mean, it is reloading every year for a coach almost. Maybe, yeah, if you have a lot more freshmen, maybe you bring in, and there, you know, you have a lot of sophomores, so you only brought in a few freshmen, but still, the chemistry and everything, 11 for 11. This is a dynasty. Like I said, he didn't like the statement I made, like I told you during the broadcast call on this Division II championship game, the Phoenix College Invitational, but until two other teams prove they can oust them, it's going to be tough to do because he is going to get those top recruits that are staying in Arizona that he is going after. But it is his coaching. I mean, his calmness. Like you said, it's not. It's about knowing when to take timeouts, knowing your team, but when not to. And he let him play through some of those tough things because, I mean, you, you called it great. Tejano was killing him on the offensive boards first 10 minutes of the game. Well, and I think uh, you, you look at that legacy, and uh, they, they have done something over here. Like I said, no one else has done in the state of Arizona. And, and that part of that legacy that is highlighted here in 2015 is the fact that, and I think is the most impressive part about their season, this is the fact that no Division I team in this conference knocked off Phoenix College. Not one. And that is impressive. Yeah, not one. And they also won the conference title, like Jeff and I mentioned a thousand times. But like you said, 
at this level, look it up. I mean, the fans, you can look it up. It's almost impossible to do. They won the conference title outright. I mean, they beat, like I said, they swept Mesa, swept Western, swept Eastern, swept Cochise. And you look at that, and with what they have, it's it's not really a surprise. To me, I was even more surprised it was the first time a Division II team won it outright because Division I teams said they always haven't been the strongest in the conference every year. But, yeah, what Matt Gordon has done, I mean, like I said, it's, it's like calling Brandon Brown phenomenal. It's almost not a compliment, but it is beyond phenomenal at this level. 11 straight years, like we said, in this game. And it is it is a dynasty here in, like you said, in downtown Phoenix. And, hey, they're just going to keep rocking because if they keep winning, people are going to come here. All right, so our final score, 84-65 in favor of the Phoenix College Bears. They are the 2015 Region 1 Division II champions, and they're heading to Nationals. They need four more wins to repeat as Division II NJCAA champions. So for Mike Caratanuto and our entire crew, Jeff Lowry from downtown Phoenix saying so long, everybody.